Hi everyone and welcome to today's mini lecture on becoming a resource parent. My name is Cynthia Morales and I will be guiding you through today's mini lecture. The learning objectives are that you'll be able to define resource parent, you'll be able to name the three goals by which DCFS operates, list the requirements to become a resource parent, and locate the DCFS page for caregivers here on the internet. The goals upon your successful completion of today's mini lecture is that you will understand the importance of resource parents to the foster children in LA County and that you'll know what the process entails should you be interested in moving forward and becoming a resource parent. What is DCFS? DCFS is actually an acronym that stands for the Department of Children and Family Services. And in Los Angeles County, DCFS um, is actually responsible for over 2 million children, for the safety of those 2 million children. And DCFS in LA County is actually the biggest child, child protective agency in the entire US. We're going to take a second here to um, do this little quiz. Think about this question. How many children are in foster care in the Los, Los Angeles County? Is it A, 9,000, B, 33,000, or C, 110,000? Take a second, just think about this and choose either A, B, or C. If you chose B, you are correct. There are over 33,000 foster children in LA County. And out of those 33,000, we had, um, according to the data from 2015, we had 0.3% being American Indian slash Alaska Natives, 1.5% being Asian slash Pacific Islander, 10.1% white, 29.3% African American slash Black, and 58.8% Hispanic Latino. So what is a resource parent? A resource parent can be a person, a couple, or a family who um, decides that they want to help foster children, um, but they have to complete the official resource family approval process, the RFA process, um, to provide foster care or adoption to a child in the care of DCFS. And a resource parent can be a relative to the child, an aunt and uncle, cousin, grandmother, um, an extended family member, or even non-relatives, which can be a neighbor or a family friend. So the three most important things to DCFS are safety, well-being, and permanency. Safety being pretty much the core of the work that DCFS does, and that is to um, provide safety to the over 2 million children in LA County. And sometimes in the um, safety assessment, it's it's um, the results show that it should be um, either a detained, um, so a removal from the home, or that the children can remain in the home with the parents um, with services in place. In either situation, um, DCFS still um, cares about and strive to ensure safety of the children, whether they are able to remain in the home or they have to be removed from the home. Um, for well-being, uh, the DCFS uses community-based organizations to provide tools and support that is needed to make the children's home safe and to keep um, try and keep families together. And DCFS has actually partnered with over 50 agencies or organizations um, that are community-based. And some of these services that they provide are parenting, tutoring, uh, medical um, screenings, um, lots of services that are available in order to help um, ensure the well-being of these children. Finally, we have permanency, um, which if children are unable to reunify with their family, then DCFS will make every effort to provide an alternative home. Sometimes that might look like legal guardianship or adoption or any other arrangement to ensure that the child has child or children have um, permanency and stability in their lives. One of the most important questions, of course, where do I start? If you have decided to become a resource parent or you and your partner, you and your family have decided to become a resource families. Um, so this is the list. It's It begins with obviously completing the application and you can do that online or over the phone. Um, attending an orientation that's provided by DCFS, 
complete background checks for you and um, everyone in the home, attend trainings, complete the home assessment and the family evaluation to ensure that you and your family are prepared to receive children in your home. Now, something to take uh, into consideration is that these training hours will include the pre-approval training, the pre-placement training, CPR slash first aid training certification. And after you are approved, you will have to renew, um, do trainings, renewal trainings every year after um, your approval. Once approved, you will receive your certificate of approval and the social worker will contact you to discuss the placement of a child or children um, based on your selected preferences, um, you know, ages, gender, sometimes families um, already had like a nursery set up. So they only want infant children. Um, sometimes they already have a room set up for a teen boy or a teen girl. And so those are some of the preferences that families um, will have. And that's something that you can discuss with the social worker. And also, um, as I mentioned in the previous slide, you will have to do a uh, re renewal, uh, training a year, every year after your approval. The big question, why does it matter? Why does becoming a resource parent matter? Well, the foster children um, under the supervision of DCFS have gone through abuse, neglect, um, both sometimes. Um, they've gone through a lot of trauma. Um, there's instability. And these children need help. They need a safe home. They need a, a safe family. They need a place where they feel like they belong. And um, I'm going to share this short clip from Dr. John DeGarmo, and he is actually a, key, a global keynote speaker and a, um, a leading foster care expert. And he, in his TED Talk, he gives this very powerful message as to why it's important to help foster children. And I'm going to apologize in advance for the um, echo that you're going to hear once the video plays. But um, I wasn't able to fix that, but you are still able to understand everything that he says. You, you can't, can't change, change the world. world. But for but these, these children, children that you, that you choose, choose to help, to help for, these for these children, children their, their world, world is changed. changed. Their, their world, world is changed. changed. And, and years, years from now, now years, years from now, now that, that child that you helped, helped they may, they may not, not remember, remember your name. name. Years, years from now, that child, child you helped, help, they may not remember your face. face. But years, years from now, now they'll, they'll remember, remember this. That, that for a time, time in their life, life and maybe the, the only, only time, time in their life, life somebody, somebody cared, cared about, about them. them. Somebody, somebody loved, loved them. them. And that's, that's how we help Bring healing to children in crisis. And that is how we help children in foster care. Because right now, right this very minute, there's a child who lives near where you live, who is hoping and maybe praying, please, somebody help me. Thank you. So I think you'll agree that that's uh, very powerful. And this is only um, just a short snippet of his TED Talk. And I'll provide the information to the TED Talk at the end um, of this mini lecture. Um, so finally, uh, you, 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 you can't can. apologize about that. Finally, we have the um, the website, the dcfs.lacounty.gov slash caregivers will you where you'll be able to find all of that information, the phone numbers that you can call to begin the process, the application, um, and a lot of good information, a handbook and all that good stuff. Um, I just want to thank you for joining me on this mini lecture today. I hope that you have a wonderful day.